That there is one of the most photographed places in the state of Wyoming. And you can see why. I mean, look at it. We're in Cody, Wyoming. Well, we're just outside of Cody. Technically, this is in the city limits, but we're closer to Yellowstone National Park than anything else. It's like this all over this part of the state. And that's why I came here to take it all in and to show this to you. Cause you probably ain't got the guts to come out here and duke it out in real man land. It's the most cowboy, macho, gun slingingest place in the entire West, mister. Ammo sexuals, boot wearers, back spitters, liberal haters. <laughs> Cody is how this country was born. Cody is one of the last real America places we got left. You said I did a pretty good job for the first time shooting this here gun. Welcome to Cody, Wyoming. What in the Wyoming? You know why I don't, you know why I don't get it? Here we go. This is why I came on this road trip. I'm just at a rodeo in the rodeo capital of the world on a perfect summer night. That's all. Sometimes I really do love my job, I tell ya. Now at this point, we had just passed the halfway point on this great Mountain West road trip. We had already been to a rodeo in Utah, but that seemed like a month ago at this point. We had lined up at a chuck wagon in Colorado, and I was in a real live Western showdown in Cheyenne. Hello. But this was different. Looking back, this was the peak of cowboy I saw on this trip. Also looking back, I wish I had more time here. Now some of you have heard of Cody before. It's not a very big place. We're way up in the far northern corner of Wyoming. We're about a half hour from the Montana border. On one side of us is Yellowstone. And all around us for hundreds of miles is prairie and cowboy shit. Well, I stayed here for three days to report back on what's going on in this part of the country. A lot of Wyoming's culture stems from its early frontier days. Everybody associates Wyoming with cowboys and rodeo. Well, its official state sport is rodeo, and its trademark symbol, that bucking horse and rider, well, they modeled that after an early 1900s tough guy bucking bronco legend named Steamboat. <laughs> I'm already envious. Now, Cody became a city in 1896. It was named after Buffalo Bill Cody, a frontiersman and Civil War soldier who was well known in the West for his cowboymanship. Today, there's only about 10,000 people here, and there aren't a lot of people flooding in. You'd think there'd be a lot more real Americans wanting to come here, but ain't yet, folks.
It's an art town, kinda. Jackson Pollock lived here for a long time, if that means anything. But they do have a lot of art galleries here, and they have an arts festival every year. And they even show the Nutcracker every Christmas. Hey, that's not manly. But Cody's not for everyone, clearly. There's not a lot of white-collar jobs here, and there aren't a lot of places to get a college education. It's almost all cowboy-themed touristy stuff, surrounded by cattle and people who shoot guns. Now we can sit here and talk about what Cody's like and if you could make a living here and what the cost of living is. But who cares about all that crap? We're here to see the Wild West shit. And it starts with guns, guns, guns. <laughs> Cody is Second Amendment Central. It's no surprise that the gun dealer in town advertises with a big giant rifle on top and the smoke shop has an even bigger rifle on it 75 percent of cody's conservative that sounds like a lot and it is for wyoming it's about average i mean over in gillette it's 90 percent can you imagine the high school mascots in town are the bronx and phillies of course they are and I saw the biggest trucks on the whole trip here. Way bigger than the trucks in Cheyenne. But it's downtown that really makes your buckshot. Downtown Cody feels like another world. So one day I grabbed my cover and my coat and I took a stroll. And I was pleased. first thing you notice here are all the wide streets. They were originally built like this, so the wagons had room to turn around. Makes sense. And they still have some wagons shuffling people around. Stagecoaches with purdy ladies on them. Damn, I should have been a cowboy. There's steakhouses on every block. More on that later. They got places to get a chap or two sewn. Places to get saddles. $2,500? They got places to get things that I don't even know what they do. But they sure smell like new leather. And I like new leather smell. They got places to get purses for the lovely ladies. I thought about it. Maybe. They got plenty of boot stores. Those sure look good on me. Sandals? We're not in Colorado. There's a cowboy palace here. That's the perfect name of a joint to get your boots. I think they should rename the whole city the Cowboy Palace. I mean, as much Western wear as one cowboy or cowgirl could ever need for a day on the prairie. There's even cowgirl stuff here. Gotta have that. It's everywhere. And it's not all just cowboy shit. There's some Indian stuff here, too. Cowboys and Indians did not get along in these parts. Not at all. The Irma Hotel is one of the most famous hotels in Wyoming. The place was built in 1902 by Buffalo Bill. It cost him $80,000. I wonder how much of that money was train robbed. There's a statue of him outside and everything. Cool dude. They don't make them like that anymore. I shot his gun. 
They keep the inside of the Irma, just like it was back in the old days. There's all kinds of shot shit on the walls. I could have shot all this stuff with that 1873. The hotel bar is a total throwback to the good old days. And I mean good. They got the rodeo on TV and everything. They ain't watching baseball in here. Uh -uh. And then outside of the Irma on the city streets, they put on a gunfight at six o'clock every night, except Sunday. And I was there on a Sunday, damn it. No gunfight. It's all right, I saw one in Cheyenne. I was in one in Cheyenne. Another famous place in town is the Silver Dollar. <laughs> of course I had to go in that bar room. This is gonna be my kind of place, I just know it. Now this place has some history. It was built in 1897, and there's been all sorts of fist fights and gun battles inside. They say that Buffalo Bill still has a tab here. More recently, some drunk dude got pissed off because they were playing music he didn't like. So he took an axe and busted up the speaker. Good Lord. There's the axe right there. That is so Wyoming. There's also a famous gun museum downtown that I really wanted to go into, but it was closed. Damn it. Did you know Wyoming has the most gun owners per capita? Well, that makes sense there, little partner. I bet you there's little Wyoming buckaroos that get pistols in their first stockings. But Wyoming has the 10th lowest murder rate. Well, people here are safe with their guns, Mappy. And how to use them. An armed society is a polite society. We keep doing that. And a pretty lady's gonna buy us some rock gut. Now some of you folks are here because you're intrigued by the idea of living in a land like this. Well, I got your back. I'm gonna give you a quick rundown on how the people here live. You know, the ones who ain't sleeping out under the stars. Now, once you get out of macho land, it kind of looks like any other small quiet town. Most of the neighborhoods in Cody I saw were clean and quiet and simple. It just looks like an average place. It's sort of affordable. Citywide, it's pushing a half million bucks for a place to lay in the hay. But in this part of town, you can still get something for under 400 grand. But they go fast. The idea of living in conservative countries pulling on people's heartstrings. Now, Mappy mentioned the murder rate in Wyoming. Well, Cody's been called one of the safest cities in the country. <laughs> Who's coming here looking for trouble? when everyone's damn armed. Don't mess with the law here. The law is respected and given free reign to prosecute. They're building some new homes here. I mean, there's plenty of space. We're surrounded by prairie. It's a nice place to raise a kid who doesn't stare at their phone all day and gets the hell out of the damn house every now and then. And I saw deer all over these neighborhoods. Probably scared from being in enemy territory. You could feel the deer tension in the air. And then once you get outside of town, it is wide open, mister. Some folks choose to live way out, away from everyone else, on the edge of the prairie. Stuff like this is cheaper than that teeny house in whatever overpriced city you live in. And you probably ain't got bucks walking right after your front stoop. And then a few miles down the road, you're on the doorstep of Yellowstone, where you could live life like the Duttons. Look at this stuff. 
Here's an example of what you can get out here. Time to leave LA, huh? So the next day, after I moseyed around downtown and all, I checked out what the rest of Cody had to offer. I noticed that the car dealership in town is a place to buy side-by-sides, <laughs> totally Wyoming, guns and ammo in the same strip mall as a nail place, that's not Wyoming, that there's the Cody Cowboy Village, that's where I stayed for a night. Of course, it's right next to the Cody Cattle Company. They have statues here that are an ode to the past. Back when men fought it out with their bare knuckles. Okay, they used weapons. Of course, I had to go into the Cody Walmart. Because you can't really know a place until you see what they have in there. Well, they don't have that at your Walmart, do they? Down the road's a really neat little historical museum called Old Trail Town. It's a way to see how the real Americans lived their lives back in the pioneer days. They have all these old replica buildings that date back to the 1800s. This is how people in Cody used to live, back when people were tough. I don't see any Wi-Fi connections or any flat screen TVs in here. Nope, just a book by the bed. Buffalo Hunter's Cabin. Now that was some tough shit back then. Too bad the rest of the country wasn't founded by macho people like this. Be a hell of a lot better country if it was. An old Cody classroom. I bet the Cody kids didn't sass their teacher. An American flag in the classroom. Back the way it used to be. Back the way it should be. Here's an old store in Cody. This is how stores used to be. I bet they didn't do any smash and grabs back in the day in Cody. They paid for their goods like good, honest men. And, and shoplifters were prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, damn it. That kind of looks like my coat, doesn't it? Yep. Talk about tough, hard-working people. Most of us couldn't stand a night living like this, but that's how they did it. And they turned out just fine. Shoot guns. That's Wyoming. And also 25 cent coffee. I think my favorite stop in town was at a place called the Cody's Firearm Experience. You pay some money and they let you shoot all the different guns they have in stock. No experience required. I mean, I have plenty of gun experience, but you might not. They even let you shoot a Gatling gun if you want. But I hear you blow through your money pretty fast, so I didn't do that. I chose to man up with this. It's the Winchester 1873, the gun that won the West. It was the rifle of choice for sharpshooters like Annie Oakley and Bill Cody. Yes, that Bill Cody, the man who made this town. See that? That's how the Wild West was won. I think I did pretty good. My assistant told me I had cowboy in my jeans. And I think he meant my DNA. At that point, I couldn't stop. I was running and gunning all over town. I felt like shooting at anything that moved. I had Cody fever. I'm going to show you how it's done on this one, too. That's right. Go on, get it. Damn varmints. Got a rattler in camp. 
I got it! Out here in the Wild West. Watch me! Boom! Shoot it, hombre! Get him! You're the fastest gun in the East! I'm gonna call you Cappy! Shoot him, hombre! Woo! Better not double cross me! No! Better not mess with you, Mappy! Where'd you learn how to shoot like that? I learned it from watching you! So Cody has steakhouses and manly places all over town to eat. The Cody Cattle Company came highly recommended, but it's more of a chuck wagon type of place where you stand in line and watch the music. And I had enough of that chuck wagon shit from the Colorado trip nearly two weeks ago. So I chose to eat at Cassie Steakhouse. They call it Wyoming's premier steakhouse. This place opened up in 1933 as a supper club. Totally my kind of place, but you knew that. That's me. I got the Buffalo Bill Burger Rare, and it was damn good, I do declare. To that damn rodeo. Now I've been to my share of rodeos. This one was unique. Most of the rodeos I've been to are state fair sort of deals, or once in a while chance to win a buckle or two. But this is the rodeo capital of the world. Cody doesn't play. They put on a rodeo every night. This is the only place in the country that has a nightly rodeo. Most of the people competing were locals, kids trying to break in their saddles, or younger dudes looking to prove something to themselves. The first kid took a big hit. I mean, right out of the gate. They just laid there all dazed like. They came over and they were like, buck up cowboy. I don't think they're supposed to move people like that, but hey, it's Cody, and we're at a macho rodeo. Drag him out of the dirt. Well, kind of macho rodeo. I didn't think I'd see shorts like that here. The rodeo and Cody goes back to the year 1919, pretty much the first summer after World War I ended. And the rodeo here was started by, guess who? Buffalo Bill Cody. They've been showing people how to man up here ever since. Sustained. 9-11 was a beautiful day until those planes lost their way. Our first responders went rushing in only to never be seen again. Just a nice night to sit out, drink a beer, spit some chew, and be among real Americans. Now I was here for three days, so I also spent some time at a real dude ranch in Cody. This was a real treat, let me tell you that. Forget about the Cody Cowboy Village. I spent two nights at a place called the UXU Ranch, or the U as they call it. You know it's a real dude ranch, 
And there's a dirt road for the driveway, right? The ranch is right off of Highway 16, which Teddy Roosevelt once called the most scenic 52 miles in the USA. We're just right outside of Yellowstone. And I mean just. Like, it's just over that hill. This ranch is super neat. They have this lodge where people gather and solve the problems of the world. And inside they have an outfit to play some manly poker games and drink some manly drinks. These types of ranches have really good food. When we were here, we had Chef Vincent on the forks and spoons. He did an amazing job. I had the Parmigiano crusted trout and the ribeye. Mm, 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 mm. The next night, I had the elk ragu and Vince's famous cowboy mac and cheese. Another mm, 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 mm. So this is what a dude ranch is like. I think everyone needs to try it at least once. So you live in these cabins, and then they have all sorts of activities. Like this one has river rafting, and you can go hiking and horseback riding. I didn't take a horse ride because I was busy, but my driver hitched a ride for a morning hoof through the mountainsides. Those are some of the ranch's horses. That's Smitty and Malibu. Yeah? They liked me at first, but after they saw me whiskeyed up a couple times, they kept their distance. I really wanted a horse after leaving Wyoming. I really did. Did you know without horses, Wyoming wouldn't even be a state? What? You're making that stuff up, Mappy. Wyoming people are tough. They're salt to the earth. God didn't make horses, then they'd damn saddle up a buffalo if they had to. Get out of here with that, damn it! What a view. Jeez. That's Yellowstone. Right on the horizon. Kind of like Wyoming. Not gonna lie. Yep, there she is, the mighty Shoshone. She's moving pretty fast. It's mid-July. So all the snow's melting down off the Yellowstone and coming right down this canyon. The ranch has a mascot. Her name's Weasel. She's a fox. Here she is, smiling. She even took some food out of my hand one night. I was like, what? And then at the ranch, everybody stays in these rustic cabins so you can feel what it's like to actually live on a ranch, just like they did in the old days. And that's my cabin right there, down by the river. I know, right? Man, right on the front porch of Yellowstone. Man. You've got fireplace, room for six and a back deck that looks out over the river man this is the way to go if you want to go to a dude ranch uxu in cody wyoming man and then john the owner we'll meet him in a minute he told me that when he lived in this cabin he used to feed moose right out this shower window that is so Wyoming. I tried to capture the stars one night, but you can't even come close to doing that with an iPhone. I'm telling you, we didn't want to leave. I just sat there taking it all in. Yeah, what makes this place, place special, it is probably, um, you can start with the state of Wyoming. Uh, last time I checked was six people per square mile. 
Um, we definitely have four seasons, sometimes only two, spring and winter. But what makes it special, I guess, is the wildlife, the landscapes. I mean, take a look at the valley behind me, the pasture behind me. Um, I can quote somebody, and I don't know who it is, but we've always, we use it in some of our advertisements, but um, it says, sometimes you find yourself in the middle of nowhere, and sometimes in the middle of nowhere you find yourself. And uh, I've definitely, I believe I've found myself here, and my friends have found myself here, and we've made a lot of friends, and this is probably, we're up here on the North Fork, probably the, uh, man, I can't tell you, it's, um, we don't lock our doors. Well, I probably shouldn't have said that out loud, but uh, we don't lock our doors here. Makes it special is, like I said, the wildlife, and uh, this is God's country without a doubt. That's perfect. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> here we are back at the most photographed place in the state of Wyoming. I think you can see why. <laughs> Good Lord. I know, it's a wonderful life at times. It was my last night in Wyoming, and I was really sad about that. Up to that point, it had been 17 days and more than 2,000 miles. And I knew there would be a lot more to see on this Mountain West adventure, but I kind of thought nothing would compare to my days in Wyoming. I'd see lots of Montana and Idaho over the next couple of weeks there's something about Wyoming that I really liked. As far as Cody goes, who knows? Maybe the place will be discovered. Maybe not. I don't honestly think anybody here really cares all that much about the rest of the country. They got a pretty good thing going on here. And I'm sure there's going to be people in this state who are going to be pissed off about this video. Well, too bad. I loved it here. And I'm sharing. But hold strong, Wyoming. Stay you as long as you can. And as the sun sets over another night of rodeoing, I'd get up the next day and get to Montana for the first time. And as I'd discover, Montana ain't no damn Wyoming. Hell, Montana ain't even Montana anymore. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you. I'm not just helping you figure out where to move but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.